uh, last year you shared the data showing that impulse uh, um, purchase share at standard checkout is around 7%. But it, it, if it comes to the self-service checkout, the percentage, the percentage drops to 1.7%. Meanwhile, we see that the more and more uh, shop formats are choosing to introduce or expand their self-service uh, self checkout area. And what, are, what kind of challenges are you facing uh, with this uh, change in shopping behavior? It's almost similar to your previous question on uh, yeah, the shopper yeah. behavior, consumers are changing. And I it's normal just to, uh, to follow, to monitor, to learn, to, uh, to research what's the behavior of the shopper. And indeed, when we talk about conversion, to convert more shopper at the checkout is harder when they want to pass it faster. And they always want it to, uh, to get through the paying as fast as possible, right? Not the nicest moment when you are in store. A lot of researches we do globally in different markets because some markets are even more advanced in terms of uh, um, non-manned checkout or self-service checkout or no checkout at all, right? So you, some formats are coming here as well. So we learn from this. So um, we have a lot of central expertise uh, in, uh, in the central office that is shared with us. So we also plan additional research to do it in Poland so this coming year to better understand the, the shopper behavior. So and it, it's true, 1% conversion uh, versus 6. But there are data that says it can, even on self-checkout, it can become 10% conversion. So uh, if you do it right. If you think from the shopper perspective, if you help the shopper to make this pur and purchase and the paying on giving his money or her money more pleasurable with the right products, with the right in queue system. So I don't know uh, about you, but when I stay sometimes in queue uh, in the self checkout, I don't know which till is going to be open. So I don't know what's the person in front of me. Should I go? Or sh is there a, a line or not? Exactly. It's the same. The same. So you are a little bit stressed. So uh, what we can do uh, because of the knowledge, the expertise of checkout, but also the great relationship with the retail partner is Mm, using this knowledge, organize it a little bit different, create an in-queue system that will guide better the shopper. So uh, right assortment, organizing the space a little bit differently can increase the conversion quite significantly. The other bit is, you know, the store is not only the, the, t the checkout or the till, so it's also the, all the store, all where can an impulse product play a role, where it is a cross-category placement, how can you make the, the, we call it the main aisle, so uh, more pleasurable, more fun, more happy. And I think confectionery has a, has a role to play. So uh, different ways of uh, um, building a stronger business with our retail partners through the knowledge that we have, through the uh, long-standing relationship and strategic partnerships that we can have to, uh, to support the shopper better, to, to grow our both business mutually together. Not only consumers buy, also you buy. Uh, last year there were three new acquisitions. Uh, I would like you to tell us more about them. Uh, with one specific question. For many uh, companies, hard times is time just to survive. For the others, it's the opportunity to find new directions. I guess this is the last case. But if you buy a uh, few new companies, few new, uh, if you do three new acquisitions, is it because uh, uh, they were ready to buy, you, th there was opportunity, or uh, these were decisions uh, taken many years ago uh, with some philosophy to go this or that direction? Starting from the, the overall perspective of the business, so um, acquisitions were not only in confectionery that you talked about. Right? As Mars, we were a business of 45 billion right now, and the ambition is to double that in the coming years. And of course, it will be it will happen through organic growth but also through acquisitions um, and uh, the way mars is looking at acquisition is to satisfy the consumer needs the few to to be relevant for the consumers so uh, if you look at the confectionery acquisition that they, we had 
there are um, brands like Trufru, uh, chocolate coated fruits. So um, um, better nutrition ingredients, be kind, um, uh, whole nuts, uh, very short list of ingredients, very transparent list of ingredients as well. Another acquisition uh, present in the US, uh, Nature's Bakery. So it's a product made of dates. So it's uh, absolutely natural ingredient, min minimal. Um, minimal list uh, of uh, what's inside. So uh, I think to answer your question simply, it will go with uh, the consumer trends. It will go with the consumer needs. Unfortunately, although if I, I would love to know how these decisions on acquisitions are made, I'm not part of the decision makers. So whether they had been taken long time ago, no, I don't know. And as I quoted the numbers, I believe there's more to come and some of them will soon some of the brands that we have uh, acquired globally will one day appear in poland i believe next to the uh, sustain sustainability transition the the equally <laughs> hot topic is artificial intelligence mm. it used to be sort of uh, you know technology solution for the limited number of sectors limited number of of companies but, but nowadays practically is tangible for uh, for us as a ordinary, let's say, consumers on the daily basis. That, of course, sparks even more the interest of the, of the corporates to invest in such, a, such a solutions. And what about uh, Mars family? How do you participate in this artificial um, intelligence uh, revolution? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It, oh, it's, a, it's a very hot topic and I think the journey has started uh, not last year, definitely, and not two years ago. There's quite some um, artificial intelligence and machine learning that we have already implemented. So, for example, here in Poland, our field force team, those that go to store, uh, um, meet the, the shop um, a manager, do the merchandise, and they use artificial intelligence and machine learning in so-called image recognition. So you come, you take a picture, and you know is your merchandising according to the planograms agreed, the level of compliance to what we call perfect store, uh, which is massive efficiency for, uh, for the person because instead of clicking 25 times, it's just one picture, then the artificial intelligence review and give you an answer of, okay, how can you improve your compliance? And uh, Poland has been the, the first uh, to pioneer it for Mars globally. So when it comes to artificial intelligence in manufacturing, so uh, here is unlimited possibilities to improve uh, the efficiencies, the value creation and, and helping with uh, saving cost, for example, of overfilling uh, the packaging. That is one of the, uh, the way we can uh, improve uh, our cost management. So, so, and probably the one that <coughs> is the brightest uh, is uh, so-called digital twins. So it's like almost a virtual factory that monitors in parallel the processes that we have in our chocolate factories. So and can give an advice in different areas. Okay, how to change the components or the amount of ingredients, uh, not compromising the taste and the quality, of course, but just to make it more efficient. There's also ways of monitoring uh, foreign objects uh, through artificial intelligence as well. And uh, without even saying that we use more and more robots or cobots just to eliminate these boring routine tasks uh, of uh, packing, unpacking uh, that we have in our factories, cleaning as well. So automation and digitalization uh, is uh, uh, on top of Poznan and Janoszowicz agenda, definitely. And I've been a month ago to both factories. It's quite impressive how year on year um, the way the, the factories organize changes and you start to see these beautiful robots doing things that frankly no one wants to do, right? This is a boring task. Robots will be needed to produce all that, but we will still need people to consume. Oh, definitely. Not only to consume, but I think uh, when you think about the tasks that the robots are doing, uh, th those that people don't want to do anymore, right? So you don't want to spend uh, your shift 
packing and unpacking uh, boxes, right? So people also want to do more meaningful, more developing tasks, and our associates will always remain at the core of, of the business that we do. I think the capabilities of, of people will evolve. The desire to do uh, much more creative and interesting tasks is evolving, and automation is just a way to, to, to support that. What is your key challenge for this year and for next year's? Can I say three? Sure. <laughs> you know, three and five are my favorite numbers, but I'll stick to three. So um, you can say five. Three. There's a lot of challenges, but probably can think on top of my mind of three. So the, the first one, we've um, we've discussed a lot already about. Okay, it, we we can grow. We want to grow, but we want to grow in a quality way, in a sustainable way as well. So, and this will, is it a challenge? Probably yes, but it's something definitely that, that we need to focus and will continue to focus on. The second, it may be linked to that as well, is uh, the talent and the capability evolution of, of our people, associates. So we talked about digitalization, we talked about uh, uh, educating ourselves in the sustainability area. So I think uh, um, the challenge is we really need to dedicate time to that, right? To, to learn new things and to support our associates doing that. And uh, me and my leadership team, that's a, the big focus in developing our associates, developing the future capabilities. Um, so that's, that would be the second. And the third, is it a challenge? Maybe more my desire is uh, to have uh, very solid relationship and long-term relationship with our retail partners. So we've talked about the checkouts, the, uh, the knowledge that we can bring. I just think there's so much more we can do here in Poland, Mars and uh, all types of distribution and retailers. I'm, I'm, I know we've been distracted by uh, inflation, etc. But you know that the years to come, uh, we, we have unlimited possibilities to to do um, fun things, to, to bring moments of happiness to, to consumers and retailers together. E, dziękuję Państwu. E, gościem Gabinetu Spożywczego była Pani Wiktoria Bramowa, prezes zarządu Mars Polska. Przypomnę, odpowiedzialna za segment Mars Wrigley, a rozmowy prowadzili Michał Siwek i Wojciech Szanok. Bardzo dziękujemy. Thank dziękuję you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.